Hi, Shannon O'Flaherty here. And it's so nice to see you all here with me tonight. And tonight I'm going to talk to you about the heart chakra. And I've been working with the chakra system for over 20 years and all of our beliefs that are attached to it. And the heart chakra is really one of our very most important kind of energetic systems in our bodies. And I'm going to talk to you about why that is on every single level that we have. So let me go here. We're getting there. Here we go. So the heart chakra resides in the middle of our chest. And even though our heart is actually on the left side, but the heart chakra is in the middle and it generally spins or vibrates to a bright green color. Some people see it as pink. Uh, and this beautiful chakra is really the, the seed of our feelings of compassion and forgiveness and understanding and generosity and empathy and caring and love also stem from this chakra. It's basically the, do the domain of our human intimacy. Energetically, our heart chakra connects our physical self to our spiritual self. And because love is the greatest power in our lives, this chakra is the most important energy center in our psyche. It's the seat of our soul and the spirit of our divine essence. And our heart chakra works in direct conjunction with our brain. How we view and experience things from our heart is very different than how we think about things from our heads. When we can allow our hearts to work with our brains, we can easily access stress-free solutions to problems. And the amount of physical, emotional, and mental energy we have determines the quality of our lives. Our internal power translates into vibrancy and resiliency. So our positive emotions add energy into our systems, just as our negative thoughts and feelings detract energy from our systems. And this is why I offer complimentary mind shift calls because half the time people are not even aware of what they're thinking. Is that you? Say yes below if that's you, because a little awareness goes a long way. And I would really love to chat with you so I can help you see your blind spots, like what you're thinking that you don't even realize that you're thinking that's actually holding you back. So some of these blind spots could be so easily tweaked with just a little aha moment. So I'd really love to chat with you. So go ahead and book that call with me. Because what we're thinking is directly connected to whether or not our heart chakra is going to be in balance. And our heart's electromagnetic energy field is absolutely by far the hugest one that any of the electromagnetic fields in our bodies produce. In fact, it's 5,000 times greater in strength than our brain's electromagnetic field. And it permeates every cell in our bodies and even also radiates outside of us, which is why a lot of people can often pick up what we're thinking and feeling. So when our heart chakra is in balance, we realize our connection to all there is. And we trust ourselves and others and the universe in the deepest sense. And we take part of everything that the universe is offering us. I'm sure you've all been in that kind of sacred situation when you're either staring at a beautiful night sky with all of the stars stretched out, stretched out above you and you feel this kind of connectedness to everything that is, or you're in front of a beautiful waterfall or on top of a mountain, and it's that kind of peacefulness that touches your sacred heart, that makes you feel connected. 
And we care when our heart is in balance, we care how we affect others and we want to nurture them and lift them up in a positive way, just as much as we want to do that for ourselves. When we have an open heart chakra, we tend to overlook people's failings and faults and celebrate their strengths instead. And because our heart chakra has attractive and magnetic qualities, it creates synchronicities and heart-based connections that allows us to communicate on a much more intuitive level, bigger than any words can allow. And so as our hearts open, we begin to understand that even though we have physical bodies, we're actually spiritual beings that are connected to everyone around us by the air that we breathe. We learn to love unconditionally. And most importantly, we learn to love ourselves unconditionally. We finally understand that we're not defective adults unworthy of love, but rather we are all precious children of the universe. So our heart is about balance. So in order for it to remain open and flowing, we must also be able to receive the good that we give out. We cannot completely give if we cannot also receive. Giving and receiving is like a beautiful figure eight. It goes out and it comes back to us. Inevitably, though, life will force us to face situations that create fear and pain. And when that happens, we activate a kind of shield to protect our vulnerable hearts and block out our painful experiences. We might all be doing that a little bit now during COVID, during this time of isolation, during uh, this time of our loved ones dying all over the place. It's a really kind of fragile time across the globe. And this protective heart shield keeps us from the agony of heartbreak consuming us so that we can still continue to function in a crisis or while we're grieving. A lot of people who are not as strong don't continue to function because they keep that shield on us because it's only meant to be a temporary shield. But when it becomes a permanent way of life, we do get distanced and cut off from each other. That's why this lockdown is really a very tragic thing that's happening across the globe because people need human connection and intimacy. But even without lockdown, this can also happen, uh, particularly as young children, if we haven't been shown enough love. So if our spiritual heart is off balance, we have a tendency to withdraw from intimacy and personal closeness. We don't allow the world to enter and we become isolated and disconnected from our sources of nurturing. We might create this scenario ourselves. We may become critical, suspicious, defensive. We might even feel paranoid and that the world is against us. We end up setting ourselves up for rejection. And despite the hard exterior, we're actually really frightened and wounded underneath all of that kind of tough heart protection stuff. An extremely closed down heart chakra could lead one to be, to be filled with secrecy or scheming, sabotage or betrayal. Someone with a closed heart chakra may also form addictions and particularly if those addictions are to drugs and alcohol, it will also shut down their capacity to feel anything for either themselves or anyone else's feelings. And this is usually uh, as, as a result of childhood excesses, um, abuse, abusiveness, excessive materialism, emotional abandonment or betrayal or family breakdown, addiction or mental illness. I mean, these are extreme kind of examples of these things. But unfortunately, 
our even slightly wounded hearts is a worldwide epidemic and the cause of all of our greatest injuries to one another. Because people with closed heart chakras are challenging to be around and they'll bring up our own kind of psychic inj injuries. It'll bring them all to the surface and create some kind of form of doubt and generally bring out the worst in everyone around them. These are emotionally wounded people because their protective force is emotional unavailability. Can you relate to that? I'm sure you've all known somebody like this, right? If any one of us is hurting on some unconscious collective level, we're all hurting. And right now, particularly, the world is hurting and suffering together. So I had a client one. I had a client once who, she really didn't like her father very much, and she actually wanted me to cut cords with her father. And energetically and shamanically, I do not, as a matter of course, cut cords because you don't really know. I mean, it's a big, sort of trendy, energetic thing to do, but I don't really advise that because when you cut cords, you don't actually know how that's going to play out. You may never see that person again. Now, unless the person is extremely evil, and I do mean evil, there's not generally a good reason to cut cords. There's usually a reason that needs to be healed. And in her case, she needed to forgive her father. Now she was gonna go see her father in another country in about four weeks time. And I said, um, have you ever told your father, I love you? She just about, freaked out. She's like, no, no, he's never said it to me. And I've never said it to him. And I said, well, how would it be if you could forgive your father and tell him that you love him? And she cried and cried and cried because of course, as children, that's all we want. We want to love our parents. We want to please our parents and we want our parents to love us and to take care of us. So she just didn't see how she could make this happen. Anyway, off she goes. And in four weeks time, I get this very excited phone call from her. And um, she said, I'm, I'm um, actually her father was in Portugal then at the time too, I think she said, I'm in Portugal. And, um, and she sounded really happy. And I said, Oh, how's it going? And she said, Well, great. I told my father that I loved him. And I was like, that's wonderful. And, and how did he take it? She said, Well, he, he started to cry and he told me that he loved me too. And I said, well, that's just absolutely wonderful. And it's because she made it safe for her father to express his love that he never learned how to express because obviously he didn't model it from his parents. So by her forgiving her father and taking that great big leap of faith to put it out there on the table and risk saying, I love you to my dad. She opened up her heart and in so doing helped her father open his heart too. And then they had a wonderful relationship. So that's one way that you can open your heart, forgive your parents, forgive whoever you need to forgive and see them as the wounded child that they are, which is why they haven't expressed their love for you. They probably do love you. They just don't know how to express it. So the other extreme issue of um, an imbalanced heart chakra is when you have an overly empathic heart chakra, which many healers actually suffer from. And this is when your heart is too wide open. So you'll be overly sensitive to the people around you and you'll start to absorb some of their stuff. And this is particularly draining physically and psychically, especially if their stuff is filled with negativity or angry, um, angry energy or anything remotely lower vibes, right? You're at the feeling, you're at the mercy of feeling whatever is going on around you, whether you want to feel it or not. Is this you? Type me if you can relate to that. I know a lot of healers um, pick up a lot of stuff with people, and that could be because of your heart chakra, and that can also be because of your solar plexus chakra being too wide open also. They both kind of work together. 
So we need to be balanced. And if this is happening, you've got to really learn the difference between sentimentality and love because sentimentality doesn't allow all the passion and pain that goes along with it. With love, however, we can honor and support someone without interference or judgment. We can resist the urge to rescue them no matter how difficult it is to watch their path and their choices unfold. When we're loving, we realize that all of life's experiences, even the painful ones, need to be honored and that we need to stay in our own energy field. So when I work with my students, I teach people how to keep your energy field free from A, your own dark pixels, but B, picking up everybody else's dark pixels because our energy field is so huge and expands all around us that if you're walking down the street in a city, well, maybe not these days with lockdown, but before lockdown, you're passing right by somebody else and picking your, your energy fields are molding and you could be picking up some thought forms or some of their dark pixels. So we wanna keep our energy field clean, clean of our own dark stuff and clean of anybody else's dark pixels as well. So a balanced heart chakra comes in many different relationships. Most importantly is the relationship we have with ourselves. And when our thoughts are positive and uplifting, our intuition works better and we have a fundamental sense of the sacred within. Our friendships are healthier, our love relationships are deeper, and we can raise happier children by easily expressing our love for them. Also, communing with your pet is a really great way to enhance your own feelings of heart chakra connectedness. That's why they always say um, getting an elderly person uh, a pet is a really good way to keep them calm because pets give you immediately something to love. And when your heart chakra is working and expanding, it's going to make you and the pet feel much better. So if you have felt out of balance and cut off and stressed out, why not book a 20 minute complimentary mind shift call with me? Because I really wanna have a chat with you and help you see where you might be missing a simple little bit of information that could give you a big aha moment and completely change your life. I want to help your heart communicate with your brain so that you can live the most loving and positive heart and brain balanced life and have the best kind of existence you could possibly imagine. It's been so wonderful to connect with you all tonight about our beautiful heart chakras. And I so much look forward to hearing from all of you. Lots of love for now. See you soon.